Hello everyone and welcome back to Noia Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noia Dev, I have lost my damn mind. Before we get into it, I gotta go over this week's bug fixes really fast. Like um, escort quest ambushes that had stopped working. This was caused by trigger colliders accidentally getting put on separate layers, fixed. Interact messages were being rendered behind walls. Like many things during the conversion from 2D to 3D, these interact messages got thrown to the rear render layer, putting them on an overlay layer seems to have fixed the issue. And teleporting from one elevation to another would put the player underground. I never had to account for the Z-axis till now, so I had to update all of the teleport logic from Vector 2s to Vector 3s. Threes. And that's all for the bugs, I think. But if you guys encounter any more, let me know in the Discord. Link in the description. Moving on, I did get to add a new toy to my rendering arsenal this week, though. Bloom! Uh, well, better Bloom! Noya already uses Unity's built-in post-processing Bloom layer if the player is outside and the sun is up. But I wanted some really glowy stuff for some certain effects. Problem is, Unity only allows for one source of bloom for the entire scene. Even if you add a second post processor and add more bloom, it just combines them together. This is just a limitation of Unity's post processing, but it's not an issue for third party post processing. Insert ad for Beautify here. Beautify can limit its post processing to specific layers and I have done so to great effect. <laughs> Since I now have a way for the monster animators to differentiate between aggro and non-aggro states, I wanted these stone golems to light up red when they aggro to a player, and the added bloom makes them especially menacing looking. I'm looking forward to using this tool to add cool effects to the rest of these monsters and maybe some spell effects in the future. But enough of all of that. Since the conversion from 2D to 3D in Noia, I've had this one issue. Players' heads clipping into walls when they get too close. My solution to this issue thus far is to simply not let the players get too close to the walls, till this tiny little ledge in the Haunted Mine dungeon. Once I saw this, I thought, okay, I gotta do something about this clipping issue. And down the rabbit hole I went. The first solution that I had found was to use what's called the stencil buffer in Unity. The stencil buffer can be used to accomplish some truly mind bending effects when wielded responsibly. Long story short, the way the stencil buffer works is every single pixel on the screen gets a value assigned to it, and depending on what rules a dev has created determines what gets rendered when those values are observed by the renderer. I applied the stencil buffer rules to Noia and it didn't work. I did set up the rules correctly, but I already had something using stencil rules. Sprite masks. Remember way back when I made it so hats would cover up player hair, that is made possible by using sprite masks. The hat has a transparent mask area around it where the hair is not allowed to render outside of the hat pixels. But the problem is sprite masks override the stencil buffer with their own rules. So you can't use sprite masks and stencils at the same time. So if I can't use sprite masks and stencils at the same time, can I figure out a different way to do sprite masks? Maybe. Oh look, another rabbit hole. I spent the next day attempting to pass the hat mask to the hair sprite shader. If I could pass both the hair and the mask to the one shader, I could simply subtract the pixels of the mask from the hair before it was rendered. I'll save you the 24 hours of me banging my head against the wall on this issue and go straight to the it didn't work. If you Google combine two sprites in one game, object, you will get a thousand threads and none of them ever get solved. In every single thread, the immediate response is, you shouldn't do this. And for good reason. Unity sprite shaders are very, very optimized to only render the single sprite that you give it. The sprite coordinates on the sprite sheet, the mesh, and everything else all get set to use the original sprite that is given to the sprite renderer. And any additional sprite that is passed to the renderer 
renderer would have to be using the exact same parameters. Trying to render a second sprite while the main sprite is constantly changing is like trying to hit a moving target while skydiving and a goose is pecking you in the face. So anyway, that's not going to work. I fell down one last rabbit hole trying to force right to the depth buffer. If I could figure out how to force the player's sprite depth to be the same depth as the player's feet, I could trick Unity into thinking the player wasn't actually phasing through the wall. But Unity Shader Graph has no way to modify the depth buffer directly. I would have to code my own custom renderer, and I'm not up for that challenge just yet. So after all of that, I gave up. There was no way I was going to be able to make use of both the stencil buffer and sprite masks at the same time. Something was going to have to go. What is that an apostrophe? I think you mean an epiphany. Lightning has just struck my brain. Well, that must hurt. What had I said before? And if any additional sprite that is passed to the renderer would have to be using the exact same parameters. Great Scott! The reason I couldn't pass the proper sprite coordinates to the shader to get the hat mask in the pass is because all of the equipment sprites were packed into one giant sprite sheet called a sprite atlas. But if I get rid of the sprite atlas and use the original sprite sheets, then all the UVs and meshes past the sprite renderer will be all the exact same as the hair and the mask put together. <gasps> I just have to delete the sprite atlas. No sprite fest! It's all being handled directly in the renderer! I Normally passing a second sprite sheet to the renderer wouldn't work, and then only working in this instance because of these incredibly niche circumstances, and I'm pretty sure I would get beat to death by a Unity dev if they ever caught me doing this, but hey! And now that I don't need the sprite mask on the player anymore, I can use the stencil buffer! And now I can render the player over the walls! And that's it for this week. I actually had to rewrite the script for this video three different times. And on Tuesday, after I had written it the second time at 10 p.m. is when I had the epiphany on how to fix the head clipping issue in the walls. So... Uh, I don't know what that means, but I'm going to focus these next couple of weeks on actually making boss attacks like I had promised the previous devlog. So I have nothing to add here other than this has been absolutely crazy and stressful and bonkers. And I got to get back to work. So I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.